Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 5, Part 2 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, delivering more information about compensation itself, and examining some of the emotions and feelings we may have about sin and personal truth. This session was recorded on the 17th of October 2017 from 2 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Examples of how the ripple effect rewards past loving behaviour. Mm -hmm. So can you give us some examples of how the ripple effect re rewards loving behaviour? We've said past loving behaviour, but it's really loving behaviour, isn't it? Well, yeah, you could say that the intention has to happen before the reward comes. Yeah. So, so in terms of a time, even though it's a very short time delay, yeah. the intention has to happen, the reward comes. Now, remember we said in a previous section that some rewards are delayed mm. through nature. Mm. So in other words, you know, if, if you are, for example, overeating, mm -hmm and you decide to stop, the delay will be that slowly you will lose weight. Mm -hmm. you, you won't have an instant result, but there is an instant result on your soul, right? So your soul has the instant result, yep. but some of the results are delayed yep. based upon the operations of other laws. Yep. So our spiritual body res responds more quickly than our physical body, but both bodies respond a lot more slowly than the soul. Mm. So naturally, the reward is first imposed upon the soul, and then it's imposed upon our spiritual universe, if you like, and then it's imposed upon our physical universe, and there's delays in all of that, obviously. Mm. But notwithstanding that, mm -hmm. any soul-based reward is instantaneous. Yeah. Yeah. So probably what we want to do is have a look at a few examples in yeah. different areas. Yes. Yeah. So I'll list the areas yep. that we'll look at and sure. then we can do them individually. So we are again looking at the ripple effect towards past loving behavior here. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at it in three main areas. So the first is being truthful or honest under all circumstances. Mm -hmm. The second pertains to upholding God's version of morality in all circumstances. And the third is about having ethics in all circumstances. Mm. All very important areas of life, aren't they, really? Well, they're global, aren't they? Affecting? Yeah, they affect so yeah. much of our behaviour, these three things, being truthful, yeah. having ethics and morality. They affect so much of our behaviour. So if we understand how the compensator effects occur mm -hmm. in a positive way with regard to them, yep. then, and also perhaps later we'll look at the negative yes. on the same three issues, yep. then we'll have a good grasp on how to make our life better very rapidly yeah. just from those three issues. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Rewards of being truthful under all circumstances. What are the rewards of being truthful under all circumstances? All right, well, firstly, I probably would like to discuss um, the position we're often in, mm -hmm. shall we say. Mm -hmm. um, in the world today. In the world today. Yeah. In the world today. When it comes to being truthful. Yeah. M most of the time in the world today, when it comes to being truthful, it, it seems like mm -hmm. <laughs> that truthfulness is not your best option. It's amazing how global that really is. Is, is as a feeling as a feeling as, on just about every topic yeah yeah now for most people they think it's not a best option for a number of reasons mm. the first one is that most of the time they believe that the truth is going to get them into more trouble yeah or well, more discomfort or more something <laughs> more more unpleasant. something negative yeah <laughs> you know it is. but just more trouble generally it's yeah. just going to get me into more trouble the second reason why a lot of us, you know, not that happy about telling truth is we think it's going to get others into more trouble. Yes. So in other words, we have some guilt or responsibility about other people. We mm -hmm. think we're responsible for them. And we think that if we say the truth, it's going to get them into more trouble. Yeah. And we don't want to get them into more trouble because if they're in more trouble, then we'll probably get in more trouble. That relates back to the first one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, so there's two. The third one is that we think that it might enable decisions, you know. That we don't want other people to make. 
So we're giving them more information, which might mean they decide something and we actually want control over what they're going to decide. So we withhold. And if they know the truth, they might decide differently. Yeah. You know, we can come up with some examples about that quite easily. Yes. But you can see that, yes, if people do know the truth about things, it does empower them yep. to make decisions. Yep. And maybe it's empowering them to make a decision that I don't want them to make. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so I will look at that and go, well, maybe I don't want to say the truth in those, in those circumstances. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a good idea to me. It doesn't seem like a good idea yep. to me. And it also may enable others to attempt to manipulate me yes. because they now know the truth about me. Yeah. So, so to punish me, to manipulate me, to make to control to, me, to make me feel guilty, to make me feel bad about bad. something, and so forth, yeah. right? Yeah. So for these and many, many other reasons, that's not an exhaustive list, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for many, many reasons, we then go, maybe the truth isn't that good. Yeah. But let's, in this example, say. I'm confronted with a situation where one of these things happens mm -hmm. and I decide yeah. to be truthful. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we listed some examples here of different ways that I could choose to do that. Sure. So, let's, let's briefly discuss some of them. So, for example, declaring my taxable income honestly to the tax department. Mm -hmm. and to the world. There's mm -hmm. two ways I can do exactly. that. Yep. Exactly. So to carry my taxable income, what's the, what, what, what are the mechanisms that would cause me to maybe be truthful? Uh, I'm not worried about what anybody else thinks. Yep. I'm not worried about what the tax might, department might do. Yep. I will not worry that they might take 30% of my wages or whatever. I will just do the right thing because it's the right thing. It's being honest. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, yeah. That's an example of me engaging the principle of truthfulness in a positive manner. And seemingly with a potentially negative result. There might be potentially yeah. negative results. Yeah. In terms of when I say negative, I might think that, you know, I might lose some money over it or something like that. But I don't know. It's the right thing to do. So I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Other examples uh, confessing to past crimes. Hmm. Conf Keep going. Confessing to sexual infidelity. Yeah, so past crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's look at confessing the past crimes. It's like, okay, so so I, I feel like I've got to be truthful. I've, I in the past I did do this thing and it was bad and it was wrong and and it harmed myself and other people, it harmed society generally. So I'm deciding that I'm just going to confess for for it. I'm just going to own up the fact that I did it, mm -hmm. and I'm going to and I'm going to say all the details about it. I'm not going to mince anything up, and I'm not going to tone it all down. I'm just going to say it as it was, mm -hmm. and and be honest and truthful about it, no matter what the results are. Yep. There's a good example of me being truthful. That's a good example. Yep. Uh, we mentioned the sexual infidelity. Yeah. So in other words, I say. Yes, I did make a mistake. I did cheat on my girl, mm -hmm. and uh, I need to tell her. Yeah, and and I need to just go and tell her, and she might decide she never wants to be with me again, and she yep. might she will have a lot of pain and suffering as a result of it. But I've already caused that pain and suffering. Yeah, and I and I've just got to tell the truth, no matter what the results are, because it's the right thing to do, and I need to do it so that she is enabled to make choices and decisions that she needs to make about what I've done, mm -hmm. and I then can also work through my repentance for what I've done. Mm -hmm. um, being honest by refusing to claim that I took an action when I didn't take it. Yeah, so there's a good example of, like, frequently people today go, yeah, I did that when they didn't do anything. <laughs> right. uh, so, like, who cleaned the kitchen? I did, I did that. that. I did that, yeah, but yeah. really you paid your, uh, you know, paid someone to do that for you or whatever. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and this is like... We often do these kind of things to look good in the eyes of others. Yeah. When really we're not good, we're, yep. we're just trying to look good. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. a person who's truly truthful does not do that. Do that. They don't try to look good when they've got nothing to look good about. Yes. <laughs> and they also don't try to look good when they didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, being honest by refusing to claim I did not know when, in fact, I did. Yes. That's a good one, too. And there's another thing that we often do, people on earth often do when they're lying. They, they often claim, I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. You know, speed, speeding along, get caught by the police, 
you know, what's one of the first, I, I'm sure the police would have heard it. Just, I had no idea I was in an 80 kilometre an hour zone. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they hear that more than anything else. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, and a lot of it, well, what did they say? You know, well, the sign was there, you yeah. drove past it. Now, sure, you might might not have known, but most of the time people do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and most of the time they just lie about it, right? Mm -hmm. And there's an example. You say, "Did you know you?" you know, the policeman might ask you, "Did you know you driven past an ODK zone?" Yep. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. One time, I remember in my old life, I bought a sports car, <laughs> and I was driving at about 140 k's down the road. And uh, I saw a policeman coming the other way and I went past and he went past and I knew he was going to turn around at some point, but to save him the trouble, I just pulled over on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> and he drove up to me and he, and he said, do you have any idea what you're doing? I said, yeah, 130, well, it was 133 k's or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, I said, 133 k's an hour, I think my speed, I said. He said, why are you doing that? I, I, was just pa I just was passing somebody. Um, but that's not an excuse. So, <laughs> so you were you were willing to be truthful with the police officer, but not so much about upholding the law. Not at that yeah, time, yeah. no. But as soon as I knew that I'd been caught, yeah, obviously, yeah. you wanted to be honest. I wanted to be honest about yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've listed there some examples of being truthful under all circumstances, but we haven't really covered what the rewards are of doing that. No, this is the thing. All the positive reward ripples from that action are now attributed to me right at the moment, to my soul, right at that moment that I took that particular action. Mm -hmm. So, so for example, taxable income. Now, all the roads that were built from my taxable income and all the good things that were done, not, not the wars that were created from my taxable income, mm. because they are negative things, mm. and that's a decision that I didn't engage, mm -hmm. and therefore and therefore won't be penalised for, yep. but all the rewards that I, uh, that, uh, that society got as a result of me of doing Of my that. intention in paying my taxes. So yeah. I didn't pay taxes to fund the war, I paid taxes to build roads, and so therefore that is attributed to me. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so that's positively attributed to me mm -hmm. and, and the rewards that gave society. So let's say somebody's driving down a good road mm -hmm. and as a result they avoid an accident, mm -hmm. right? That will also be partially attributed to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because of my intention. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Let's say somebody decided to educate children, you know, mm -hmm. have a school built. Well, that, that part of that would be attributed to me because yes. I provide some of the funds to do that. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose things like being um, open about sexual infidelity. So a lot of times sexual infidelity happens in families historically and it's guarded like a secret either between the members of the couple or mm. once it's exposed between them, then nobody else can know about it. Mm. And uh, the rewards of being very open about that would be far-reaching, I can see, in that uh, the people in the family system can understand more emotion, they have more awareness of the emotions that are driving actions and they can see things more clearly. There's also the potential that the people involved will correct their actions and then also correct their underlying desires. Yes, because they're willing to be so open, they're, they're more in touch with what's going on and what's gone on and mm -hmm. what they really feel about it. And why they chose to do it. Yep. A lot of times, they, you know, most people when they choose to... Let's say a lot of people claim they love their wife, but they are in, they are unfaithful to their wife. Yeah. But, so why did they choose to be unfaithful? They start working through the reasons and they say, oh, it's because of this or that. or yep. And they start seeing and examining the true reasons for why they choose to do something. Yep. And if they change those particular true reasons, now there's a good potential for the relationship to thrive after yeah. that point. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. But basically all the positive results and ripples are attributed to me for being truthful and God's laws reward me for my courageous action. Yeah, great, eh? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I, guess I, I guess I'm kind of pinning you down a bit on the rewards because I know given what we listed at the beginning, a lot of people feel like, yeah, that's fine to say there's rewards for it, but it feels like my life's falling apart as a result of being truthful. Do you see what I mean? Well, we also forget that there's an afterlife. Yeah. And there's huge rewards in the afterlife for being truthful in this life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
and because your soul condition has demonstrated a certain condition that's what the reward is yeah so if your soul is in a certain condition that condition in the afterlife will attract the exact location that matches your condition mm. Now, now, most people are not considering that when they've taken action on Earth, mm -hmm. but that's the reality. Mm -hmm. and, and also, in the Earth, it has the potential to do the same if the people around us accept that. Yeah. Right? So, so it has the potential to create a new reality for us, mm -hmm. literally, in our physical life, mm -hmm. if we choose to act in this way. Yeah, and, and a lot of people do report a sense of freedom from telling the truth, because there's a lot of effort that goes into withholding truth and obscuring truth and, and guilt and, and other and emotions, all kinds well. of things. So <laughs> they're all the penalties. And such <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when people say, "Oh, I told the truth and my life's falling apart," I think, "Well, you haven't. You're not experiencing just how bad it would be if you weren't telling the truth right now in terms of the negative compensatory effects of and living also day I to feel, day with your dishonesty." Yeah, but when I feel they say that too, they're not. They're, they're being very selfish about it. Yeah. They, they, they've only told the truth with the expectation that their life doesn't fall apart. Yeah. And, and the reality is if the life is falling apart, it's not God's fault and it's not the truth's fault. Yeah. They're not even examining whose fault it is. Mm -hmm. right? If they're telling the truth and everything's falling apart, they're not actually examining whose fault that is. Yeah. They're not being truthful about those issues. Yeah. So I can't say that they're being totally truthful if they say such a thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and all negative results and actions taken by others due to hearing the truth from me are not attributed to me because they're negative and my intention was loving to be truthful. Mm. Um, but rather when somebody else takes a negative action based on hearing the truth, so we gave the example of someone attempting to manipulate me or punish me as a result of hearing the truth from me, then penalties are imposed upon those people who didn't respond lovingly to the truth. Exactly, exactly. But, but there will be no negative uh, penalties upon me mm -hmm. for, for whatever they chose to do. So it's like if I pay my tax, there's no penalty on me for the government then using it to go to war, particularly if I didn't vote for that government. Mm -hmm. There's no penalty on me for the government using it for war mm -hmm. if I paid my tax. Mm -hmm. If my intention was that it wasn't used for war. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got to get your intention in there, don't you? Because some people do and they have a strong feeling of wanting to be protected from their fear if, and in those through cases, violence if necessary. And in those cases, their intention is that they do want war. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If <laughs> under certain concessions. Yeah, yeah. And that will also be measured, yeah. but that's a negative one. We're talking about the positives. Yeah. So, so the same applies to my intention to be honest with my wife if I've been unfaithful to her. Mm -hmm that that is a positive intention she will have decisions to make about that um but one of the things she won't have to decide is whether i'm a liar or not <laughs> <laughs> well and immediately that a person um can feel confident that you're not a liar there's the potential for trust exactly. even if there's a lot of pain there's also trust which is a very positive compensation isn't it exactly so there's a lot of positive potentials that yep. are created through my being honest. Yes. Now, I may not realise them all in my life uh -huh. because of the delays associated with time delays associated with physical and spiritual life. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I will realise them. Yes. Yeah. And they so certainly this, have a positive result on my soul. Yeah. And we did talk about that in a previous session, didn't we? About the fact that the soul based compensation is immediate mm -hmm. and then the physical and spirit uh, life compensations they take some time to come to yes. be apparent to us yes but we can always tune into the soul and, and start to feel the immediate benefits mm -hmm. yeah mm. yeah excellent yeah. Right. and if a person feels an immediate negative consequence for doing a positive thing then i suggest they're not feeling the benefits <laughs> they're actually feeling some other addictions in play yeah yeah which yeah. are obviously going to be we have negative, negative conversation, conversation yeah, for yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay. So if a person has the viewpoint, I shouldn't tell the truth if I'm going to get hurt, mm -hmm. then that is certainly going to be corrected. Yeah. Mm. Or I shouldn't tell the truth if it means everyone's going to be unhappy with me for a period of time. That will also be corrected. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'll tell the truth because that's the right thing to do, but then all of you should be happy about me telling the truth. That will also be correct. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> all of those are actually negative 
yes. viewpoints. There yes. are unloving yes. viewpoints. Yeah. <laughs> the desire to control another person's response to you. Is an unloving viewpoint. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's the rewards of being truthful under all circumstances. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> rewards of being moral under all circumstances. <laughs> So what are the rewards of being moral under all circumstances? Well, again, I'd probably like to do a bit of preamble here, which talks about, well, you know, if in the world we live in, the environment is such that we're often confronted with situations where God's morality and the world's morality are two opposite ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. and that we are encouraged to engage the world's view of morality rather than God's view of morality. And can we say here, when we say God's view of morality, we're not talking about religion's view no, of morality. We're which talking, is very, very different. Because that's more aligned with the world's view of morality. Or there's varying... Um, well, religion's view of morality is very confused. It is. It has, yeah. it has some viewpoints of morality that make no sense from God's perspective if you analyse everything from God's perspective. Yeah. And then it has some other views of morality which are quite accurate mm -hmm. right, in terms of God's perspective. So, you know, you know, one of those things is marriage. Yeah. You know, marriage isn't a piece of paper. Yeah. You know, just because you've got a piece of paper, it doesn't mean that you're married yeah. from God's perspective. Yeah. Marriage is all about two halves of the soul from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. So there's an illustration of how God's view of what's moral and the world's view of what, mor is, what, what is moral is very, very different from each yeah. other. Yeah. Now, of course, a lot of people will find uh, living together without marriage mm -hmm. and under some circumstances, from God's perspective, that is moral. Yes. Uh, and other, under others, it's if right. they're playing around the field, playing the field, or not wanting to have a, a loving commitment with each other, then from God's perspective, that's immoral, whether they're yeah. living in a marriage or not. And there's many people who are married, for example, who uh, look at other people sexually. Yeah. And that's a very common occurrence. And from God's perspective, they've sinned. Mm -hmm. um, just because they've built a piece of paper, it has nothing to do with it. Yeah. It's because of the issue regarding the fact that they are looking at another person other than their sexual partner mm -hmm. without being open or even mm -hmm. want, wanting to know about that particular situation and how it affects them sexually. Yes. But just the distinction I wanted to make was that God's morality is not defined by religious faith by religious faith it's right. defined by god yes <laughs> <laughs> and and specifically here we can say it's defined by god's laws yeah yep. yeah okay so, so so given the fact that uh you know there are situations or that we're often confronted with yes. where we're asked to engage immorally mm -hmm. more in harmony with the gods um, out of the harmony. world's definition yep out of harmony with god's definition of morals mm -hmm and in harmony with the worlds, mm -hmm. and whether that be, you know, a religious viewpoint or a non-religious one yep. makes no difference. Yep. Um, then what do we do? What mm -hmm. do we choose to do? Mm -hmm. Well, seemingly, sometimes we miss out on pleasure. We <laughs> think if I do it in harmony with God's view of morality, I'm not going to get any pleasure. Yeah, like yep. let's say I'm a married man and I haven't had sex with my wife for three months and this woman comes up, she really wants to have sex with me. And... God's view of morality is that I would not engage without actually somehow breaking off the relationship with the wife or yep. or, or with the partner, yep. uh, or that I would at least inform the partner of my mm -hmm. intention. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be God's view of the More requi moral. moral requirement. Yeah. Yeah. My feeling is if I take the time to do that, I might miss the opportunity. Mm. <laughs> this, yeah. this woman might go and have sex with someone else. I don't want that. So I decide to ignore the moral requirement mm -hmm. and engage sexually let's yep. say now if i chose the opposite no i'm going to keep this moral requirement i'm going to run off home <laughs> <laughs> just hang a sec <laughs> yes i would love to have sex with you i think you're beautiful and, I, and i'd love to have a relationship with you even and whatever but i just need to go home <laughs> and sort <laughs> out check it. sort out the check issue out with my, my wife yeah. <laughs> or my partner because i need to tell her that that's how i'm thinking about and what yep. i'm feeling about and what i'm deciding to do before I go ahead and do it, yep. um, you can see that would be a pretty... So I might miss out on that pleasurable experience. I might, but uh, it would be a pretty amazing thing to do, wouldn't it? Um, from from even the person who I'm just thinking about being with's mm -hmm. point of view, mm -hmm. they go, wow, it's like there's a guy who's pretty 
pretty moral. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to at least inform the people who are involved before he goes ahead with his action. Yeah, mm. yeah. All right. A lot of positive uh, rewards from that one. Yes, a lot of positive <coughs> rewards. But let's talk a little bit more about why we don't often do this yep. before we go into the rewards. Sure. So um, uh, often when I have this choice to act morally or um, not, <laughs> often I choose to not to because I think I won't be rewarded with pleasure. Um it seems like I'm not going to, that my selfishness uh, is, that I'm not going to get what I want. Exactly. My, yeah. uh, um, I want to reward my selfish behaviour. I yeah. want to get what I want, in yeah, other words. Yeah, yeah. And my feelings are that if I am moral, I won't I get what I want. Yeah. So, so a lot of times that, that causes us to choose to be immoral. Yes. But imagine, again, the opposite. If, if we choose to be moral, even though it's not what we want, Mm -hmm. Even though I don't finish up getting what I want, mm -hmm. that's pretty. That's that demonstrates a lot of moral character. Yes, it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah. Um, it means that I might not get my addictions met, yes, and so. the things that I really want met. If I be moral, might not get actually what I want. Exactly. Yeah. In other words, I'm not. I'm no longer focused on meeting my addictions at all costs. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to, uh, you know, I'm only going to do things that don't meet my addictions. Yes. And also that don't meet the addictions of the people around me. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That's a pretty big thing. That's a pretty big thing, actually. Yeah. And yeah. to have the moral fibre to yeah. not give people things that you know are their addictions yeah. is a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. And you can see why God would reward it yes. a lot because it's such a difficult thing to do yeah. yeah uh and i might not gain the approval of my family my friends and the environment that i'm living in yes yeah frequently our family friends and environment expect us to do what the community benefit thing is rather than what the soul benefit thing is mm -hmm. and when i say community benefit i'm mm. using the term very loosely yep. in that they believe there to be a benefit oftentimes when there is not mm -hmm. and so they want us to do what the family or the environment wants yep. so this is like for example i decide like for, uh, for example one of the things that i was faced with in the first century was my family wanted to me to marry a certain person yes and it was not moral for me to do so because I did not love her or care for her and I knew she was not my other half. Yep. And I refused to do so, even though my father and, and my family uh, and eventually their family almost tortured me to death yeah. as a result of my actions. And I'm sorry, physically tortured me to death. I had a lot of terrible injuries as a result of that one act. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't agree. You acted morally. Yeah, and in the first century I had the option of having lots of wives, but I still couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so community-wise, it was okay to have two or three wives or five yeah. wives or ten wives. And actually you were seen as having more status if you did. Of course, Yeah. and more power and so forth. And uh, I couldn't do that either. Mm -hmm. And that was very much looked down upon at the time, mm -hmm. uh, even though that was the community, general community decision. Yeah. yeah. So that yeah. gives another example of yeah. the community placing a confronting situation before you yeah. and then attempting to punish you for not doing what the community wants. Yes. So there are a lot of the reasons why we choose to not act morally mm. in our day-to-day -day life. But yeah. the converse, when we yes. choose to act morally in those situations, you can see that there must be a lot of rewards, and there are a lot yeah. of rewards, in fact, yeah. from a soul level. Yeah. A huge amount of rewards come from those particular types of behaviour. Yeah, mm. because really the definition of morality is to act in harmony with God's definition of what is loving. Exactly. So, so whenever we do things that are moral, truly moral, yeah. we're acting in harmony with God's definition, definition of, of love. love. Yeah. And God would... Which is more greatly rewarded than ethics is even rewarded. Yes. Yes. Because because uh, ethics are really humans' definition of what's equal. Yes. Whereas whereas here, morality is God's definition of what mm. is loving. Yeah. So, yes. of course, when we do things that are moral and we act in a moral way, uh, we get 
a huge amount of rewards. Mm. Okay, let's talk about some examples where we can choose to act morally and what the rewards might be. Mm -hmm. Sure. So not engaging sex when I'm drunk. Well, I think I think the rewards of that are pretty obvious. <laughs> well, yeah. what are? Well, you, you know, there's no danger of uh, you know pregnancy. There's no danger of uh, hurting one or another person through some kind of lack of commitment. There's no danger of hurting the person you're with by mm -hmm. by cheating on them. Mm -hmm. There's no you know. There's quite a lot of po potentially great effects from. <laughs> not engaging sexually when drunk besides the fact that you could uh, when you say when you're drunk there's a high likelihood you might engage in sexual behavior that is is fairly risky yeah. and therefore you might also you know have got a sexually transmitted disease and so mm -hmm. forth mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. if you had done so and none of those things will happen if you didn't <laughs> <laughs> and there's no as i think you touched on there's no um potential that i i'm really drunk i'm really horny i'm just going to sleep with this person and I wake up the next morning and I think, oh, I'm not attracted to this person at all. But mm. now there's kind of this weird contract of something happened between us and, you know, none of that actually happens. Yeah. yeah. Mind you, we'd have to question the morality of getting drunk in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a different issue. In it's itself. a whole other issue. <laughs> it's a whole other issue, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, well, then other examples then of not having sex when I'm angry or just to hurt someone else. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's... A lot of choices that are made sexually are made to hurt people or because you're angry about something. Yeah. And... Uh, like, I just found out my husband cheated on me and now I'm going to go and I'm gonna sleep get him with back someone. Type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that. there's all kinds of things. Or even just somebody pulled me down, you know, like, so I need a sexual pickup, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of reasons why we may engage sexually for the wrong reasons. Yeah. If we choose not to, we're being moral. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, and I was just thinking there you spoke about the avoidance of the penalties, but actually there's more rewards. When when we have a, a strong sense of our the value of our sexuality, which is something that you and I have spoken about in private a lot, when we value our sexuality as something precious and we don't engage with other people out of anger or drunkenness or, or, or just um, or for any unloving reason, any unloving reason we mm. value it as something special and precious and personal, mm -hmm. then um, the rewards of living in harmony with that is that feeling grows. Yeah. Our self-esteem grows. Our well, there's a lot of personal. Of sexuality I suppose goes. you could say there's a lot of personal rewards, yes, which are all to do with self-esteem and worth and those kind of issues. Self knowledge, yeah. self value. But there are also a lot of rewards to any potential relationship you have uh, or might have. Yeah. In that you haven't tainted yourself with a long string of sexual partners, you haven't harmed yourself with a long string of sexual partners. You value the sexual relationship between each other. There's a higher likelihood that you would engage it more honestly and openly and also with more joy mm -hmm. if you if you value it. So there, there's a huge amount of positive benefits. And it will be like this this um, giving of a gift that's very special <coughs> to has you. its own rewards. Yeah. And the person who's receiving it will probably think it is special. Yeah. And well. so the positive compensation is attributed to all of those things, whether you're in a relationship or not. Yes. Because that's what you would offer to a partner if one was there. Exactly. Yeah notwithstanding the soul-based compensatory rewards that are going to result once you pass. Yeah. You yeah. won't be in the hells. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas if you engage sexually promiscuously, yeah. you will be in the hells when you pass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Due to these moral issues that about are really about God's definition of love. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Lovely. So um, what about the rewards of being open about sexual disease or relationships when engaging sexually. Yeah, in other words, so if, you, if somebody proposes a sexual relationship with you, if you're not open about your sexual history, mm. that has the potential to be very harmful to that person and to yourself in the long run. Yeah. And uh, it would be a point of morality to be honest about your sexual history. Yeah. Yep. And yet I find many couples who have been married for 20, 30 years have still haven't been honest with each other about their sexual history. Yeah. So, so the rewards are in fact. Um, well, what they're doing is they're blocking off a part of their life to the other part. Yes. So how can you have a pure, open relationship 
if you're already blocking off a part of your prior life with that from person, that person. Yeah. you can't really. Yeah, yeah it's impossible. Yeah. So the intimacy is is compounded when you are willing to be. Yes. The potential for intimacy is um, made possible when through you, honesty. Through honesty about you know, any aspect of your life. Exactly, and yeah. particularly about anything that involves a relationship, which is all a part of your sexual life. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. Uh, another example. Mm -hmm. Not lying when everyone wants me to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the world seems to want you to lie a lot of times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do I look good in this dress? <laughs> a good example. <laughs> or, or even more seriously, this thing happened, but we shall never speak of it again. Correct. Yep. That's a common one in families. Yes, very yeah. big one. Yeah. And a big one globally in governments, in, yes. in businesses, organizations. in organisations, yeah. where there is a contract, uh, an unwritten mm -hmm. contract between people that they will not disclose potentially harmful effects to that particular business or government or religion. Yeah. yeah. And all of those things are completely false and completely out of harmony mm. with God's view of morals. So then conversely, the rewards for a whistleblower in an organisation who says there's Assuming all Assuming they have the right motive. Yes, okay. So what would be the right motive? The right motive would be that they Moral. want to see a correction. They want to protect people. They want to help people get out from under the oppression or whatever. Yep. That would all be right motives. Yes. The wrong motive would be, I just want to make this, I want to destroy this government or this religion or whatever. Or I want to punish. I, or I want I, to punish them or yep. I want to imprison them or whatever. Yep. That would be yep. the wrong motive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the rewards then for someone who tells the truth mm -hmm. um, under, well, the whole world or the whole organisation or the whole family or the whole, in their, everyone in their environment is saying, do not do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, what kind of rewards would that person... Well, of course, there's a lot of personal rewards. Firstly, there's no guilt, shame or any of those other kinds of feelings that you would have for lying. Yes. So so you feel a lot better about yourself. And yeah. that's a big thing, a lot bigger than what most people give it, mm -hmm. you know, give credence to it. Yeah. It, it's, it's a very big thing to have a good opinion of yourself yeah. it, because your worth is a very important part of your happiness, in fact. Yeah, and so if you continue to do things that make you feel you know, that, that make you feel ashamed, that, make, that lower your worth, mm -hmm. um, then obviously you're going to have a lot of sadness in your life. If you do things that are going to improve your worth, yeah. then you'll have a lot of happiness in your life. So there's an instant reward. Mm -hmm. The instant re other reward is now there's the potential of knowledge yeah. for everyone around you. So yeah. you're instantly rewarded for that. Yeah. Um, and, and God attributes that potential to you immediately. Yep. So whether everyone finds out or not after that point, mm. um, God attributes it as if they have yep. to your soul. Yep. Now, that's an, a major improvement in your soul condition. Yeah. And in fact, um, so much so that usually a person engages in this kind of behaviour. By the time they've got to the point of doing these kind of things, there's a high likelihood they'll enter the second sphere of the spirit mm. world rather than the first, mm. um, just through engaging these particular Which moral Which is significant principles. because most people don't. Most people they don't, no, not consistently. Thing. Yeah. Not consistently. And there's also the other reward of um, you immediately begin to engage with God's higher laws, don't you? Before then, they're just theory. <laughs> yeah. But you don't actually get... Until you're willing to morally say, for example, tell the truth, um, come what may, uh, you don't actually get to experience some of the uh, different attractions that might happen Correct. and the different sensations you might have. And, and the lovelier the, people you meet. The, exactly. You, and all you, those things. You end up being around people who value truth as well. That's right. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a high likelihood then that those people will be truthful with you. Yes, which means less pain for you because... Because there's less people lying to you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so forth. There's so many yeah. benefits yeah. for being morally sound. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to have the time, obviously, to list them all, but mm -hmm. but it gives you an idea or should give the, our listener an idea that, man, that, that that's a re that really, there's really good motivations here. Yeah for yeah. actually being moral all the time. Yeah, mm. yeah. But another final example, just quickly, of not meeting others' addictions, even if they punish me. 
Yes, the average right. person on this planet at this stage will punish you for not meeting their addictions. Mm. They will. Mm. I, I have not yet, I have yet to meet a person who hasn't punished me <laughs> <laughs> for not meeting their addictions. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, to do it requires a lot of moral fortitude, yeah. but there are huge benefits, yeah. firstly to yourself, yeah. uh, again, with, with regard to things like, you know, your own self-esteem and worth and so forth. But also, um, you, don't, you don't any longer feel this drawing of your own energy away from yourself all the time to other people. Mm -hmm. You don't feel tired, you, you have more energy, you're less exhausted. But on top of that, the other person has a opportunity now to change that you've offered them. So you've given them a gift yep. and offered them an opportunity to change that they would not have or probably would not have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, God knows again, and the long term rewards, particularly mm. our spirit life and our condition. And again, like I say, a person who's willing to do this is usually usually arrives above the second mm. sphere of the spirit world in the mm. spirit world. It's very it's very hard for a person who uh, who engages this positively. Yes, so in other morally. words, morally, they're engaging this morally. Mm -hmm. it, it, it'd be very difficult for them to sin in to such an extent that they would actually arrive in the first sphere of the spirit world. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, so it's pretty awesome. It's, it, it means that you will not go through much, yeah, hardly any pain and suffering when it comes to your location After once you, you pass. pass. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm. Okay. Well, just finally, this rewards of being moral under all circumstances. When we are moral, under all circumstances, all of the positive ripples and results of our moral behaviour and intentions are attributed to us uh, and God's laws are rewarding us. And again, whether we perceive it in the here and now, often we do have some perception of some rewards, but as you said, there's very often more uh, as the spirit, as we leave our earth life and, and so on. Yeah, and initially we may not be that sensitive to the immediate rewards because mm -hmm. it requires emotional sensitivity. Yeah. But once you are sensitive to the immediate rewards, they are much greater, in fact, than many of the long-term rewards mm -hmm. because it, because it, uh, every immediate reward means that, that you're now living with the benefit of that immediate yes. reward. And you, so. you've experienced that a lot, haven't you, where... Even though the world around you is often giving you quite a hard time, you actually feel better within yourself yeah. from having told the truth. Or, or yeah, no, yeah. I, like my conscience doesn't bother me. Yes. I sleep well at night yes. and, <laughs> you know, there's no... Um, I also get a lot of uh, rewards of events that go on around me as well yeah. as a result of it, um, which most people don't experience in their life because mm. they don't engage these moral principles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So That's yeah, certainly, yeah. and and it also has the effect on whoever is my partner, obviously. So, yeah, that was just feeling better. Yeah, because it, because it, there's a, a an encouragement of closeness, isn't there, in the in the yeah. relationship then, and, and and growth, and growth, and an openness sexually and emotionally and and spiritually, and the, a willingness to be able to discuss any matter mm -hmm. as a result of it. So um, I, and I certainly experience rewards as a result of your willingness to be moral. And also there's, uh, you know accurately the condition of every person around you as a result mm. as well, which then means that every, uh, almost everything you attempt to do is fairly predictable mm -hmm. when it comes to people and how they're going to respond. And when you say that you can accurately see the condition of people around you, is that because you are in a, a desire to be moral you can then sense where other people don't have that same desire to be moral, which gives you... Or if they do. Or if they do. Mm. And that gives you a good um, understanding of the conditions around you and the people around you. And also what decisions they may make yeah. that involve you. Yeah. And yeah. how those decisions may impact upon yeah. your life. Yes. All of that is now quite predictable mm -hmm. in comparison to what it was before. So, yeah, there, there are so many rewards uh, mm. for being moral. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. Uh, and just finally, we should mention that any negative, any and all <laughs> negative results and actions taken by others due to my desire to actually be moral, mm -hmm. due to my positive desire, some people might choose to take a negative action, mm -hmm. um, 
none of that, the compensation for their negative actions is attributed to me. Mm. Not at all, because it wasn't a part of my intention. Mm. But the penalties are imposed on those people who chose to respond negatively to my moral stance. Yes. So let's say uh, I've decided that I want to have a sexual relationship with a different person. Mm -hmm. I go home and tell my current partner, no, I don't want to have a relationship with you anymore. I've decided I want to have a relationship with this person. Yep. And that partner decides to, you know, lie about you or take the children from you or whatever they choose to do that's yeah. out of harmony with love. Yep. All of that is not your business. No. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not going to be, you're not going to be penalised for it. Yeah. yeah. That's their choice, their decision, yeah. their actions. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So that's wonderful, isn't it? How, it is how the law works there, yeah. I feel. You know, the issues of morality are, are large, as you stated, because of it being God's definition of love. Mm. And, and if we can really gain God's definition of love and then act in harmony with God's definition of love at all times, yeah. We, there's there's so many huge rewards and there's no so, and there's no downside. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's right. The only downsides that are caused are from people's responses. Mm -hmm. And that's their business. And the truth is isn't it that we're already living with those downsides when we don't act morally and we we're on that earlier in this session. But we are degrading we talked our condition. About the slope we can go down. <laughs> exactly. And when we when we please our environment that is immoral. Uh, we We're are steadily living... approaching their, the environment's condition. Yes. So even though sometimes it feels like, oh, I'll be moral and every, there's going to be all these negative effects around me, it's just that when we're immoral, all the negative effects are occurring and we're letting them encourage us down a dark path. Is and not that... only that, the negative effects we're desensitising ourselves to. Yes. Which is a very dangerous thing, as we've talked about, because yeah. that re that requires the word denial, which yes. is one of the things we've previously discussed. Yeah. You, and if you desensitise yourself through denial, then you are definitely going to be on a on a downward trend in your soul condition yeah. until you stop doing that. Yeah. And uh, and being moral stops that. Yeah. 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 So it's a wonderful thing. There, there's a huge amount of rewards for being moral under all circumstances. Yes compensation always rewards this and there are no penalties associated with it from God's perspective. There are only, the only penalties ever that are caused through you being moral are caused by a degraded environment around you mm -hmm. and the actions or reactions of the people around you, none of which will be attributed to you yeah. from God's perspective. In fact, before you act in a moral way, part of it can be attributed to you the, the general environment. You mean when you refuse to act morally? Yes. Yep. Then the environment with, within which is you partially live attributed, is yeah. partially attributed to you. As soon as you become moral, moral it's not attributed none of it to you is. anymore. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's yep. Excellent. It's excellent. Excellent. Good system. Mm. <laughs> the rewards of being ethical under all circumstances. Hmm. What are the rewards of being ethical under all circumstances? So th this is another, uh, you could say, example of the ripple effect in a loving direction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So again, uh, if we look at the circumstances, we're often confronted in situations where being unethical, we often believe is better than being yes. ethical, right? And we and have we have these ideas about what is going, what's going to happen if we are ethical, don't we? Yeah, and here we're talking again about what ethics really is. Mm -hmm. What ethics really is in this case is me appraising your worth and my worth as identical. Mm -hmm. So now whatever happens to you is 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 as if it happened to me, mm -hmm. and whatever I would like you to do, I would also be guided to do. Yes. And so this is the principle of the golden rule, which mm -hmm. we talked about, which is recorded in the Bible, and, it's talk and I talked about it in the first century. Now, this uh, rule is not as high in terms of its moral condition as having God's viewpoint or definition of morality, mm -hmm. but it is still a quite high moral condition yep. in the sense that I am wanting to treat you equally to myself yeah. and I want you to be able to, I desire you to treat me mm -hmm. as I treat you. And that means that I'm not willing to view you as inferior or superior. Or superior, yeah. yes. 
and I'm not willing to do something to you that would harm you for my benefit, but I'm also not willing to receive from you treatment that would harm me to your benefit. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a true ethical condition. Yeah. So there's plenty of, uh, you know, there's three or four that I've listed, I think, in the outline of, of the reasons why we might not want to yes. do that. So let's, <laughs> so let's look, look at, at them. Those. Well, often we believe that if I act ethically, I'm not going to be socially acceptable anymore. Yeah, and that unfortunately in the world we live in is quite true, true. oftentimes, um, where ethics is often looked down upon. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends in our, of course, in the community that we live generally. So, yeah. so if you say lived in a very financial system, for example, mm -hmm. often ethics is very much looked down upon there. I, I remember many of the men I met while I was developing uh, land, uh, developing property, many of them were very unethical people who, mm. who would never, never allow having something done to them that they did frequently to other people. people. Yeah. And, uh, and as a result, you know, they're quite poor condition, of course. Mm. But, but it was to what they believed their advantage. Yes. In other words, that they made money from it. Yeah. And um, so they thought it was great. Yeah. Yep. yeah. You see it a lot happening in sexual ways too, where, mm. you know, you've got the opportunity of, you know, of having a sexual interaction with somebody. Mm -hmm. So you take the opportunity without considering, uh, you know, the long term effects of that opportunity that you're taking. Yeah. And, uh, and how you would like to how, be on the receiving end of it. Yeah, if you were in a relationship, how would you like to be on the receiving yeah. end of that? Yeah. Somebody else taking the opportunity. So, and how does it make us socially unacceptable in the world today? Well, there is, um, again, I, as I said, it depends very much upon the social area that you live. Yes. Uh, there are certain things that are completely socially unacceptable with regard to ethics. For example, if you're of the Islamic faith mm -hmm. and somebody uh, attacks the Koran, mm -hmm. then it's socially acceptable to attack them. Yeah. But from an ethical point of view, it's not ethical. Yeah. Um, if you're of the Christian faith yeah. and uh, somebody attacks you, attacks the Bible, for mm -hmm. example, and then you decide to violently respond to that attack, yeah. uh, which many Christians do do, mm -hmm. um, then from God's perspective, you're not ethical mm. because it's not the kind of treatment that you would like done to you. Mm -hmm. So, so there is examples of like, it just depends. Most of the time, it depends on your social environment. Yes. And so if you're a politician, it's ethical to lie. Mm. That's what you believe. It's not ethical from God's per perspective, but yep. for most politicians do lie or but if you at do, least obfuscate. <laughs> if you do tell the complete truth with it, um, as a member of a political party, you could certainly be seen as unacceptable. By that party, By certainly, that party. particularly if the truth was quite negative. Yes, yeah. If you're in a company yeah. and the company was dumping toxic waste and, uh, you know, your company line would be to... To deny that. Deny that it's... You're dumping toxic waste. Yes. But it's not very ethical to no. do so. So you can see there's many times when we're unethical. Right down to the point of killing people, like tobacco industry, which kills people, the mm -hmm. meat-eating industry, which kills the environment. Yeah. These are all unethical practices, yeah. but they're socially acceptable. Yes. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Uh, also acting... Ethically often means that we believe we're not going to get what our want, what we want, so our selfish desires are not met. Yes, so this is similar to the moral issues. Yes. Uh, frequently, if we're unethical, we decide, oh, well, I'll get what I want then. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, this often happens when we're in, involved in finances, you know. Yeah. If I'm unethical, I'll get more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very few people reward you for being ethical. No. But they certainly try to penalise you when they find out you're unethical. Yes, it's sort of, yes, there's a lot of... Um, there's not many carrots here. Yeah, there's not many sticks. carrots, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, we feel like it's not good to, if I'm ethical, then I'm not going to meet the addictions of the people around me, and a lot of us believe that's not a good idea because mm -hmm. they often react very violently, as we've spoken about before. And it also means a lot of times when you're ethical, you lose the approval of your family and your friends and, and your society, as we've mentioned. But 
Yes. A lot of people have a lot of problems with losing that family and friend uh, approval. Yes, so a lot, of, um, a, a lot of ethics would prevent codependency and mm -hmm. prevent meeting addictions and sacrifice. Yeah. And yet these things are quite acceptable yes. in families in particular, but also in society. Mm -hmm. And so most of these kind of things would not be possible anymore. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is going to trigger the family members or society into responding negatively to mm -hmm. your no longer meeting their demands. And, uh, and that requires a very strong concept of ethics in order yes. to prevent, you know, to fight against that. And not, I'm not saying you fight it, but to prevent yourself from acting in harmony with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's, let's look at some specific examples and talk about the rewards, because we've talked yes. about why everyone thinks it's not a good idea, but there's actually a lot of rewards. That's right, and, and the reality is that if you think it's a good idea while everybody else thinks it's a bad idea, there's already <laughs> yeah. a lot of very positive rewards from that. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. All right, so let's take the example of not meeting the addictions of other people because either my own or other people's addiction because love demands that I don't meet addictions. Mm. So what kind of rewards am I going to encounter from that? Well, firstly, I won't have any of the, um, the, um, the penalties associated with it, obviously. Yeah, so yeah. all the we'll sleazy feelings and all those yeah, other yeah, things, yeah, yeah. Uh, I won't have any of those. So that's a positive. Yes. The, the, there's no negative uh, yeah. for you know, feeling bad about yourself and the sleazy interactions yep. you're having with other people. Yep. But there's also other positive rewards, and that is, firstly, there's a group of positive rewards associated with your personal worth. Mm -hmm. You know that you're being ethical. Yeah. You know your conscious is not ha does not have to bother you about different issues. You know that you're doing the right thing. You know also that uh, doing the right thing means that you don't have to worry about having done the wrong thing, mm -hmm. right? So in other words, you're going to sleep well at nights and you're mm -hmm. going to, all of those subsequent benefits are all going to come to you as a result of being able to be ethical. Mm. And do you, you also, don't you create new potentials for a relationship? When a relationship is stuck in addiction, so I'm meeting yours, you're meeting mine, mm -hmm. or I'm demanding you meet mine and I'm living in mine, then there's a very limit there's a limit to how positive that relationship can become isn't it can there? only ever be codependent yes yep. whereas if i say love demands that i'm not going to meet my addictions with you yep. and i'm not going to meet your addictions anymore then there's a new potential for something positive to well, occur. now positive growth in the relationship can occur yep. if and both people engage that positive potential. what about even if i just engage it then uh, there's a light little the relationship break up, break up. but that would be a good thing too <laughs> yeah. because it means that you're living in a more ethical yeah. way. And I then create the potential for... To meet another person. To meet a person who's more ethical. Mm. Or Which is to... great, being great for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sweetheart. I still don't think I was that ethical. No, I... but, but you might not <laughs> have been, but... but. If I, the more ethical I become in prior relationships, it opened the possibility to meet you. Mm -hmm. When I became more ethical in our relationship, it opened the possibility for you to become ethical as well. Yeah. And as we both have engaged that process, our relationship gets closer and more positive. It's like yeah. the honeymoon period wasn't there. No, <laughs> it's coming. We always well, it, well, no, it's, it's starting. It's, it's starting already, but. Yeah. But this is what I'm saying. You get closer and closer and closer yes. and closer. Not for what most people do in their relationship is they have a little honeymoon period and then they get further apart. Yeah. And the reason why a lot of the times is because they're being unethical, unethical with each other. I, that's absolutely true. And that is absolutely our experience mm. where in the beginning it's rough because there's all these... Because there's a lot of confrontation. Confrontation. But the more time goes on, we definitely grow closer mm. And the ethics is not only strengthened within one, it's strengthened in both. both. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the confidence in your relationship obviously then grows. grows. Yeah. And so, you know, you're very confident that the person who's, who, you, who you're with is actually dealing with you ethically. Yeah. In prior relationships, I was never certain of that. Mm. Ever. In fact, I was quite certain of, of the opposite, mm. that they mm. weren't acting ethically with mm. me. So, yeah, there's a lot of positive rewards there. Mm. Besides the soul-based rewards uh, that apply that you get to see when you pass as well. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And also, I mean, something that we have experienced lately is that people commenting to us about, oh, I feel encouraged by seeing the changes in your relationship. 
Yeah. I feel like it's possible. Yeah. And so then that's a reward for others, isn't it? And that's attributed to you. That's also. right. You're now demonstrating a true relationship from God's perspective, whether yeah. it's with friends, family, or with your partner. Mm -hmm. And as a result of demonstrating a true relationship, you're now demonstrating what God feels is the proper way of having a, a relationship. relationship yeah. And this has a huge amount of positive rewards, given the fact that the average person on the planet is demonstrating the opposite. Yes. So naturally, you're going to get um, a lot of positive rewards for being one of the first people to demonstrate <laughs> God's ways of doing things. But and even if even if you weren't the first, the, mm -hmm. the well, there's still the personal benefits. Yes. Yeah. And there's still the rewards for all the people around you who have a relationship Your with you. Your family members, yeah, everything. Mm. Yeah, a lot of rewards. Because, mm. uh, again, we talk about the rewards a lot in personal terms, but I also see that there's rewards that are happening to people around you when you choose to be ethical and moral. That's right. Everyone knows they can trust you. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think I have a business person now that interacts with me who, who doesn't believe I'm going to be ethical with them. Yeah. And they all know that they're going to get paid on time. They're going yeah. to get, you know, paid for the thing I'm contracting them to do. Yeah. There's no doubt in their mind. Yeah. And as a result, they're much more willing to do things. Yeah. And there's no animosity or yeah. or angry feelings on their part mm -hmm. because they know that they're going to be treated well. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. Let's let's move on. Um. So we've covered, I think, not meeting my own addictions because yep. it's a selfish thing to do. Um, feeling my emotions rather than attacking other people. So that's an ethical thing to do. Yes. What kind of rewards mm. come with that? Well, firstly, I get to feel myself. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a reward. Of course, uh, for the Most first time. don't think that, but it is actually. I get to release my emotions, which cause all my sickness and illness. And so I actually am going to get healthier physically. Mm -hmm. I'll have less pain physically. And mm -hmm. um, I get to experience the benefits and joys of being more healthy mm -hmm. as a result. So mm -hmm. that means my body uh, usually ages less, yeah. less, less uh, rapidly. rapidly. Yeah. And I remain healthier for longer. And mm -hmm. um, I'm able to engage as a result of that health. Um, a huge amount of activities that I would not normally be able to engage as yep. a result of my other kinds of behaviour. Mm -hmm. Yes, now, what was I up to? Feeling my emotions, that's right. <laughs> Just had to have a cough there. So, so feeling my emotions gets a beautiful amount of benefits for myself personally. It's a beautiful thing for everyone in my immediate environment because they don't have to feel my emotions. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to feel like they're getting attacked by my emotions. They're not going to feel like they're getting, you know, they're having to compensate for my emotions. Be responsible, be for, responsible for my emotions. Work around them. Work around me. Yeah. And so forth. What a lovely gift to give everybody mm -hmm. around you. Mm -hmm. On top of that, uh, you get to, um, other people will get to experience the real you. Yeah. So you get to experience the real you, of course, because yeah. you're feeling your real self. Yeah. But other people get to see the real you too. Now, sometimes they won't like it, but sometimes they will. But <laughs> either way, at least it's the real you and not a facade. They're not always in doubt and going, is he really like that or is he not like that? Yeah. What, what is he really like? Yeah. Because they can see what you're really like. You're ethical with them in each, each case. So mm -hmm. they get to benefit from that. And, and you get to benefit from the fact that anybody who does engage you probably now is going to engage you in a similar manner. Yeah. And if not, you are going to be able to easily see that they're not. Yes. As a result of your condition, mm -hmm. being able to examine somebody else's condition. Yeah. So they are all pretty positive benefits from you yeah, yeah. choosing to be, to not meet another per sorry to to own your own emotions and mm -hmm. and not dump them on other people yes besides the fact that you are now much more in harmony with god you now have a much more open relationship with god pot potentially mm -hmm. you also now are going to be rewarded for the fact that you're not dumping all your negative stuff on other people all the mm -hmm. time and uh, and you're taking responsibility for your own life and behavior and you also the other reward is sort of the reward of being more sensitive to the operation of the law of compensation because you're more sensitive emotionally. You can then begin to feel, am I sinning or am I being loving in, through the immediacy of the operation of that law, can't you? You're also more sensitive to your conscience. Yeah. 
and, and other aspects like that, yeah. which we'll talk about a bit more later. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about the conscience and its role it is. in yeah. repentance and forgiveness. But, but the reality is it's a beautiful aspect of your communication with God that you can mm -hmm. now engage. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a huge amount of potential, of actual rewards as well as potential future rewards yeah. as a result of you acting ethically just by owning your own emotions. Yeah. Um, most people don't do it. Uh, unfortunately, mm. and so they only bear the consequence of not doing it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. And the final one was being truthful, even if it exposes another family member. Yeah. Well, that one's pretty obvious, isn't it? Like, you know, you can see that there's rewards there, mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, you now know that a relationship with that family member is possible in harmony with truth. Yeah. If you lied. Now, a relationship with that family member is not really possible anymore. You're now living with each other's facade now. And uh, so a true relationship is no longer possible. Yeah. Yeah. So the immediate reward is that it makes a true relationship possible. Mm -hmm. It may not be engaged by the other member yeah. because of their hurt or anger. But you're encouraging them towards truth. You Say you're, <laughs> you're being transparent about something that they have done yep. or that they feel or whatever. Um, and, and you're, you're just being honest you and open about it. You don't agree with it or whatever, and you're and being honest and open about your opinion. With them, or sometimes you're honest and open with other people. Well, you'd have to be honest and open with both. Then, exactly. Um, and in both cases, it brings that person closer to the truth about how they are and challenges their facade, all of those things that are actually good for them. Yeah, it? and yeah. potentially can help them grow. It's an act of love to, yeah. to your family member yeah. to do this. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, most people don't see it that way. Yeah. But... But as I said, any negative thing that happens is never attributed to you if you yes. had a positive motivation. Yes. So, and maybe we should just talk about that finally mm. as we mm. finish off. Um, that all the positive results and ripples of me being ethical are attributed to me. Yes. And God's laws reward me for my ethical um, intention and actions. Yes. Uh, that it's very courageous to be ethical, as we mentioned at the beginning. The world is quite opposed to personal ethics, and yet when I'm ethical, God's laws are rewarding me, not only for the ethics, but the courage to exactly. act in disharmony with the pressure in my environment. Exactly, yeah. Um, and any and all negative results and actions taken by others due to me being ethical, so I've done something ethical and they decide as a result of that to do something actually quite unethical and unloving, None of that is attributed to me at all whatsoever, mm -hmm. but rather the penalties are imposed upon that person who made that decision. Yes, and of course that's fair, isn't it? Because yeah. my intention was that, you know, I wanted to be ethical for good reasons mm -hmm. and uh, as a result of that, those intentions should be rewarded and the law of compensation does reward my loving intentions. Yes. So this whole section was about loving intentions and here we see with regard to ethics, having ethics is a loving intention yeah and as a result we are going to be rewarded for the loving intention and and we need to understand that any negative things that happen as a result of me being ethical are not god's intentions mm -mm. they're not god's compensationary laws working mm -mm. they are in fact due to people on earth and their intentions yeah or some unhealed condition within myself that i've yet to recognize yeah and as a result I would at some point have it exposed mm -hmm. <laughs> through the law of compensation. Yeah. Yeah. So the law of compensation is very good when it comes to exposing these things, and, but yeah. also the law of compensation is, is beautiful with the way it like, finally rewards yes. the uh, loving action undertaken under any circumstance. Yeah, mm. yeah, no, it's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you.